Check out the description for the first and second parts of this series. Assume I have a two-link robot with the end effector represented as a point at the end of link two. Now, we place an object somewhere in space, represented by this red dot, and we want the end point of the second link, or the end effector, to reach the object in order to pick it up. Here's the big question. What should the angles of the first and second links be so that the end effector reaches that target position? Now, just by using some hit and trial, we can see that for this case, the orientation of links will be somewhat like this, where theta 1 is 48 degrees and theta 2 is minus 55 degrees. Negative sign indicates the clockwise direction of link 2 with respect to link 1. So this will be 55 degrees. But how can we achieve the same using maths? That's what inverse kinematics is all about. It is one of the most interesting and useful concepts in the world of robotics. This robot has two links whose robot parameters are theta 1 and theta 2 like this. Length of link 1 is L1, which is 3 units, and that of link 2 is L2, which is 2 units. Suppose the position of our object is 4 and 2. That means the object is 4 units to the right and 2 units up from the robot's base. Then assign the fixed and the moving frames to the robot like this. Now, from the previous video on forward kinematics, I have shown you how we end up at this transformation matrix T and big X equals T times small x. For our case, we assume theta 3 to be 0 in order to keep things simple and substitute L1 and L2 here to get this. Here small x will be the same as the origin of the end effector or this end point of link 2 and thus it will be 0, 0, and 1. And the big X will be 4, 2, and 1, because the object is at 4 and 2 from the robot's base. Multiplying T with small x will give us this matrix. Now, equate big X with this matrix. We get these two equations. So you can see that we have two unknowns and two equations. From this equation, we can write 2 cos theta, 1 plus theta. 2 equals 4 minus 3 cos theta 1. And from this equation, we can write 2 sine theta 1 plus theta. 2 equals 2 minus 3 sine theta 1. Square both sides of this equation to get this, and this equation will become 4 sine theta 1 plus theta. 2 whole square equals this square. Can you think of what I will do? Yes, right. I will add both these equations to get this plus this equals this plus this. Whoa! Using the identity sign square theta plus cos square theta equals 1. We get this as 4. Now expand this using a plus b whole square formula to get this and expand this to get this. Noise. Again, using this identity, both of them will add up to give 9. Then 9 plus this 16 and this 4 will give 29 minus 24 cos theta, 1 minus 12 sine theta 1. Take both of them here and this thing here to get 24 cos theta, 1 plus 12 sine theta, 1 equals 25. Okay, let us solve this. To do so, divide all sides of the equation by square root of 24 square plus 12 square. Why? Because if we draw a right triangle with sides 24 and 12, then using Pythagoras' theorem, the hypotenuse will be of length square root of 24 square plus 12 square. So if this is some angle A, then cos of A will be adjacent over hypotenuse, or 24 over this. Sine of A will be opposite over hypotenuse, or 12 over this. And tan of A equals 12 over 24. So we can rewrite this as cos of A times cos theta, 1 plus sine of a times sine theta 1 equals 24 over this. But this is the formula for cos theta. 1 minus a equals this, which means theta 1 equals a plus minus cos inverse of 25 over this value. And we can rewrite this a as tan inverse of 12 over 24. Thus, theta 1 is approximately 48.14 degrees or 5 degrees. Now using these two equations, 
we can find theta 2. Divide both of them like this to get tan theta 1 plus theta 2 equals this. So theta 2 equals tan inverse of this minus theta 1. Finally, we get theta 2 equals 305 degrees, which is also equal to 305 minus 360, or around minus 55 degrees in clockwise direction, for theta 1 equals 48 degrees. When theta 1 is 5 degrees, we get theta 2 as 54.3 degrees. Therefore, these are the two possible values of theta 1 and theta 2. This value already confirms the solution, which we obtained initially by hit and trial. Now let us also check for solution 2. Let me bring the link 1 angle to 5 degrees and link 2 to 54 degrees, and there we go. The end effector again reaches the same target. This shows how using inverse kinematics, we can mathematically calculate all possible joint angles needed to reach a given position instead of guessing or manually adjusting. Now, only if this video gets 10,000 likes, I'll go ahead and make the next one. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good!